Give me water from the well that never runs dry. Give me water from the well that gives me hope when I die. Give me water from the well that never runs dry, and I will thirst no more. Hey everybody, Mr. Dustin here, and welcome to Bible Class. If that was a song that you don't know, I'm going to put a YouTube link in there so you can learn to sing it. It's a very good song I remember singing whenever I was a kid. But I want to ask you a question. How many of you have seen the movie The Lion King? I have. I remember whenever I was little, fourth or fifth grade, it came out in the movie theaters and we went to go see it. It was a cartoon at that time. Now you can see the live action version of it. But do you remember whenever Simba and Nala go with Zazu to the watering hole? Do you remember that? It was whenever he sings that song, I just can't wait to be king. Do you remember? When they go to the watering hole, do you remember seeing all the different kinds of animals that were there? I can remember seeing monkeys and elephants and giraffes, pink flamingos, ostriches, rhinos, and of course the lions were there because of Nala and Simba. But there were all kinds of animals at this one place, the watering hole. And when they go other places, you don't see all the different kinds of animals necessarily. Why was all the animals there? Do you know? Why do all the animals come there? Well, in Africa, in that, that Serengeti desert area where the Lion King happens, sometimes there's only one place that you can get water, and it's at a watering hole. That's just a small pool of water in the middle of a desert, really. And at that watering hole, you will find all kinds of life. And that's because everything has to have water to live. It's pretty simple, really. Well, today, we're going to talk about a different kind of watering hole. You see, 2,000 years ago, back when Jesus was alive walking on the earth, people didn't have running water like you and me today. They couldn't just go to their sink and turn on the faucet and fill up a glass of water. It didn't work that way. Instead, they had to walk to the well where they would be carrying a jar of water, well, it would be empty on their way, and they would fill it up and carry it back on top of their head. Sometimes that would be almost a mile walking back and forth. It's a long ways, and they would have to carry that water all the way back. So I want you to listen to this story from John chapter 4. There's a story whenever a woman comes outside of her town to Jacob's well. It's a town called Sychar in Samaria, and she meets the Messiah there, Jesus. And I want you to listen to what happens. Now, he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a woman, Samaritan woman, came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone to town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them 
will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. What was Jesus offering to the woman? Do you remember? He said he had living water for her. Why was that so interesting to that woman? Why do you think? Hmm. Well, she said to Jesus, she said, Give me this water so that I don't have to come back here every day and draw more water. And I think she was a little bit confused. You see, Jesus was not talking about water for your body to drink. He was talking about water for your spirit or maybe for your soul. You see, when you look at the watering hole that we talked about earlier, you find out that everything needs water to live. There are going to be predators like the lions and prey like the zebras that are all side by side getting water at that watering hole so that they can live. And that's true for us as well. We must have water. And so Jesus uses this idea to tell us our soul needs water too. We need a spring of living water coming from inside of us. And only Jesus can give that water to us. And it's a well that comes up to eternal life. And so I have an activity that I, I want to show you that you can do with your family. You probably need your parents' help to be able to make your own vessel that you can draw water with and you can remember this story of how Jesus promised living water to the woman at the well and to you and me. So watch this and then we're going to sing our song one more time. So you've been hearing the story about Jesus and the woman at the well and how she, she was going, you don't have anything to draw with. How are you going to get water? So we're going to make a reminder of that. You'll need some sort of a Coke bottle, plastic bottle of any sort, some kind of string, some scissors, a hole punch, something to mark with. I've got a Sharpie. And then you don't have to have, I happen to have a two-foot ruler. Something that you can measure string, and I've already cut. Something close to two feet will work perfectly. Be sure you find an adult who can cut this bottle in half for you with some scissors. You just poke a hole and cut around. I've just marked a line around the edge of the bottle so that I can have a, a mark for me to cut along. So I'll do that and then I'll come back. Now that I have my bottle cut in half, I'm gonna take my hole punch and I'm gonna punch a hole a little bit down from the top on one side and then I'm gonna go exactly on the other side and do the same thing. Once I have that, I'm gonna take my string and tie it to this side and this side so that it makes a loop I'll do that and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Now I've got my little drawing vessel all tied up and ready to go. You really should be able to set this in the water and be able to scoop up some water with it. So that's just a fun activity that you can do with your kids. I don't know that they'll be able to do that by themselves. But it's something you can do and talk about that story how the woman met Jesus at the well and Jesus offered her to have living water that wells up to eternal life. Try it and have fun with it with your family. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that we have living water from the well that never runs dry, that Jesus gives to us for our souls. So let's sing this song one more time. Give me water from the well that never runs dry. Give me water from the well that gives me hope when I die. Give me water from the well that never runs dry, and I will thirst no more. All right. Thank you for coming to Bible class today. I hope that you learned something and that you remember that we have living water within us because of Jesus. Let's pray, and then I'll see you next time. God, thank you so much for being such a wonderful and awesome God. Thank you for giving us water because water helps our bodies to live. And thank you for using that to teach us about living water that helps our souls to live, that we can have uh, this welling up to eternal life. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending Jesus that we can have that water. And it's in his name that I pray. Amen.
All right, thank you for coming to Bible class, and I'll see you on Sunday.